Dog FPV. Today we're finishing up a two-part uh, series on an AOS 5 build that I just did. Uh, this is really a short video where I'm going to summarize my thoughts on this build. And so let's go ahead and start with the flight controller, which is the uh, Newbie Drone Infinity All-in-One flight controller. Um, I really like this flight controller. And uh, the reason why is it's an F7 flight controller. It has 32-bit ESCs. It's rated at uh, 45 amp cont continuous with a 55 amp burst. Um, it has a, uh, this metal, big metal heat sink on it. It only weighs 21 grams, so it's uh, lighter than a traditional stack. Um, it also supports the DJI air unit. It has a 18 watt output for running even a large air unit in the back. It is water resistant. And lastly, it makes your builds very easy um, because there's very little soldering. You just really have to solder on um, the motor wires and a few UR uh, wires. So it's a really easy flight controller to do a build with. Uh, the cons, the biggest one for me is the price. When I bought this before big price hikes that were going on, it was $116. I noticed that now it's $169, but all the flight controllers have gone up in price. So uh, the uh, another you know uh, flight controller that you might consider if that's an all-in-one. I know Lumineer has an LUX HD all-in-one F7 flight controller, but it doesn't. It isn't as uh, water resistant. It doesn't have this big heat sink. It's not sealed. So keep that in mind. And it's uh, priced out at $89, but again the prices fluctuate. Um, so, uh, you know, I think this flight controller is worth it, um, but, you know, the pain point I know is really gone up significantly as far as the cost. Then also the other con I have with this one, but it's not a big one for me, is that it only has three UARTs. So typically F7s have more UARTs, but for me, for this type of a build, that's plenty. Moving on to the Tracer Nano receiver, which is underneath here. Um, here are the diversity channels, the pros. It's uh, obviously the latency is a huge reason why you wanna move up to um, Tracer. The other pro is if you're familiar with TBS Crossfire and uh, the TBS Crossfire um, ecosystem, you'll feel right at home with Tracer. Uh, the other pro is TBS has a good quality control and uh, support. So I think uh, if you have a more expensive build, I think Tracer is a good way to go. Um, the cons, it is more expensive than ELRS. Um, I know that's uh, the brand new, you know, shiny protocol and it's open source, but I don't think it's nowhere near as mature as Crossfire. And because Tracer is really an evolution from Crossfire, um, the players that are currently promoting um, Express LRS, you know, is Happy Model and Beta FPV, which, you know, I'm not knocking them. Um, they're good entry level, um, have good entry level products, but they just don't have the quality control as a, a Team Black Sheep would have. So for more expensive builds, I have way more confidence in uh, TBS, Crossfire, and, and uh, Tracer than I would for an Express LRS type um, receiver. Not saying that they're bad, they're good for whoops and that sort of thing. I just think, uh, you know, it's a pretty immature protocol. And eventually as we get more players into that market, I think uh, that definitely will be uh, something that you would consider. Not much more to say about the DJI Air unit that everybody already uh, doesn't already know about it. Uh, the reason why you go with this over a Vista is that you can record your video directly um, from your camera. So it's onboard uh, recording and it's 1080p, which is plenty adequate for what I want to do. And uh, the other pro here is um, the heat dissipating capabilities. Uh, this thing is just uh, very robust. It has a metal case all the way around it and that um, allows it to dissipate more heat. Um, the reliability of electronic components goes down. 
um, as heat goes up. So this will definitely dissipate more heat. But with that, the con is of course weight. And, uh, but for me, for this build, I wanted something super rugged that I didn't have to worry as much about overheating and uh, also the onboard recording. On the Bifly finder, it's hard to see in here. I really uh, like this. This is one of my uh, favorite um, battery backed up finder buzzers that you can get. It's very lightweight, doesn't cost a lot. Um, it is not quite as loud as uh, the standard size version, but um, I think uh, it's plenty adequate f for finding your quad. I mean, it's still pretty loud, so I don't think you'll have any issues finding it. It's just not quite as loud as the original. Uh, but um, it does come with a significant uh, weight savings. It only weighs 2.7 grams. On the clear racing LEDs, uh, the pros, um, they are very bright LEDs. It's lightweight, um, makes motor replacement a snap, and it protects the wires from prop strikes. So definitely well worth it. On the FPV Cycle 25 millimeter Imperial motors, uh, these are my favorite five inch motors at this time. Uh, the pros, very smooth linear response. That's a big thing for me and uh, lots of torque. And uh, again, this is uh, one of my favorite five inch motors. Um, the Con, it is more expensive than let's say an iFlight Zing motor. So it's like $20 versus $25, but, and then sometimes it's hard to find them, but they seem to be in stock now. But um, I really um, give two thumbs up on these motors. Last thing I wanted to talk about is the um, AOS 5 frame itself. So let's go through the, the pros. Number one, as advertised, this is a very quiet frame. Uh, when I looked at the black box logs, um, it really uh, allowed for me to use a more aggressive filtering and pit tuning. So that's a definite plus. Um, also, uh, the frame is large as far as it has lots of room in here to put the components in and uh, it's a fairly easy build. Um, it's not too complicated. I also like the center section here. Um, it's not wasted space. Um, you can put, again, I put my buzzer in there and my um, uh, tracer receiver in there. Um, so I think all around it's a, it's a good solution as far as having plenty of build space. Um, another pro on it, um, it has minimal props in view. I mean, you do see a little bit um, with these larger 5.1 inch props, but it's just, you can easily crop it out. Just on the very edge, I can see it. Um, also, um, you can, um, you know, I think this thing's pretty solid in a crash. I mean, I don't fly Bando, so, um, you know, I can't attest for that, but I have crashed it. And with this uh, strut um, configuration, it is uh, pretty robust. Um, also, um, you have relatively easy access to your electronics. Um, there's um, eight screws that you just have to take off. And again, once you take this top plate off, there's all kinds of room. Um, lastly, uh, I like that the arms are replaceable. So if you do happen to, to break uh, an arm configuration, so it's this is one piece here, but this whole section comes off. And uh, so I would recommend getting spares of those. Um, the cons, um, it's uh, not the, I, I would guess uh, people would say it's not the most refined frame as compared to, let's say, the Impulse RC Apex frame is better looking. Um, this is a very utilitarian looking frame. In closing, this is uh, the five inch build for me. Uh, it uh, has a very locked in feel and um, it's lightweight comparatively um, to other five inch builds out there. Even with the um, DJI air unit, which you can replace with a Vista. 
And uh, that being said, um, because it's so locked in, um, any little mistake you make in stick movement, it's gonna get reflected in your video. Um, if your fingers get jittery, your footage will uh, mirror exactly that. So it's that locked in. So yes, you definitely feel the low latency of the tracer receiver and it's more in the footage. And I was kind of surprised because uh, in, in one section um, I was a little jittery and it reflected any little stick movement in my video. So next I will show you uh, my maiden flight footage. It's unedited and uh, as always, I greatly appreciate you watching my channel, and if you have any questions, uh, put them in the comments below.